Hello everyone, welcome to Homeschool Autism Life. My name is Jamie. Today's video, I wanted to do a Rio do. So if this is new to you, don't worry about it. The other one is gone. But I wanted to share about the hymn, It Is Well With My Soul. I have recently received a comment that they would like me to do more videos on hymns that are important and the history behind them. And this one I felt needed to be a better video than the one that I <laughs> filmed before. But this hymn, It Is Well With My Soul, has meant a lot to me for a very long time. My mom learned or learned, taught herself how to play the organ and would have us sing it with her in our home. And sadly, when I was 16, she passed away very, very suddenly. And this hymn was one of the ones that helped me through so many different things. And that was before I knew the history of what had happened to the writer of this song. So if you're not familiar with it, it's talking about when peace like a river attends your way. So when <laughs> when you sit by a river and you listen to the river, uh, there's a peace there that is indescribable from anything else. But it's with him, even when sorrows like sea billows roll. And what he's talking about there, and if you are a family with a special needs child, we talk about this all the time, the the negative news hits in waves upon wave after wave and grief is very much like that. It's very heavy and it hurts and it, it continues to come at you. Slowly as time goes on, it might not be as you know ferocious as it is at the beginning, but it is a part of that. And he's saying that that peace is with him while he's dealing with that. Uh, he said, whatever my lot, so lot, I'm sharing this if in case you don't understand the old English. Lots is something like when you pick a straw and you get the short end of the straw means you get to do the unwanted, you know, thing that's supposed to be done. Whatever my lot, whatever bad thing comes into my life, God, thou has taught me to say it is well, it is well with my soul. And that's like one of the main, when you sing hymns, often that first uh, verse and uh, the chorus is the thing that sticks in your head most, right? And so this is one of those ones, but there's some great lines in the, the following verses. So those Satan should buffet and trial should come. So even though Satan is attacking me and tempting me and trials are going to come, let this blessed assurance control. So what is my assurance when this is happening to me that Christ has regarded my helpless estate? So God knows that I'm helpless and has shed his own blood for my soul. So I'm no longer helpless. And he goes, it is well, it is well with my soul. My sin, oh, the bliss of this glorious thought. So, you know, you're like, why is sin blissful? It's because there's more to this sentence. My sin, not in part, but the whole. So all of my sin is caught up and the thought is, that it is nailed to the cross and I bear it no more. <laughs> so that's the blissful thought. All of it, not none of it is left behind. Uh, and it is well, it is well with my soul. I bear it no more. And then the last one is talking about heaven. All right. So Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight, when you recognize my faith in you and my thankfulness for your salvation. The clouds will be rolled back as a scroll and the trump shall resound and the Lord shall descend. Even so, in that moment, it is well with my soul. So the history of this hymn is fascinating. So the man that wrote this had been through something terrible. His name was Horatio Spafford and he was alive in the 1800s. And he, when he had moved to Chicago and was a successful lawyer, he was uh, 
involved in his church activities. He was a man of intelligence, refinement, deeply spiritual, and devoted student of the scriptures. So if you know anything about what happened in 1871, there's a fire, a great fire in Chicago. And so Spafford essentially lost all of his real estate holdings um, near the shore of Lake Michigan. And it just essentially wiped out. It was a big disaster. And there, so there was lots of stress. And so desiring arrest for his wife and four daughters, as well as wishing to assist some of the saints or the people working in Great Britain, he planned a European trip for his family in November of 17, or 1873. Excuse me. Unfortunately, last minute business made him stay behind and so he sent his family on ahead and unfortunately their ship struck another ship and the, Eng the, the ship that his wife and daughters were on sunk. And several days later, when the survivors were able to land in England, Mrs. Spafford cabled her husband with the words, saved alone. So all four of his daughters were lost in an accident, essentially. So shortly after, he jumped on a ship to join his bereaved wife. And when he was over the spot where it was believed that his daughters had drowned in this terrible accident, is it's believed that that was when he wrote, when sorrows like sea billows roll. And yeah, it's just, it's, it's amazing to think about that. Later on in their lives after uh, they had dealt with <laughs> everything, him and his wife ended up having two more daughters and they ended up moving to the Holy Land and setting up a mission over there. But when you read the words of these, the, these songs, sometimes it can be like, well, you know, those stories get lost, number one. Number two, I think that there's so many times where you're like, well, you know, did they really understand what it's like to live today? Well, no, they don't understand things like cell phones and, and computers and how fast paced everything is, but they certainly understand, stood grief and sorrow. And in this instant, I can't even imagine. I've, I've been through some things and I can't even imagine losing one of my children, never mind four, and being able to pen in those moments as you're going over the accident site, it is well with my soul that peace like a river is with me as sea billows roll of, you know, these grief and sorrow. And so it's been a song that has stood the test of time because there is a foundation to it and there's a truth to it that the world can't understand. And I don't mean that in a mean and nasty way. I mean that in a, if you do not have God in your life, if you do not carry him through the tough times of your life, and you can't understand how somebody can have joy despite their circumstances, especially if their circumstances are horrendous. <laughs> like there's so many times where life is not easy and it's not straightforward and it's not something that you can just go, oh, well, everything's going to be a okay. It's, it has to come from somewhere deeper or higher than us because you can look at your life and go, oh man, I wish that didn't happen. I'm sure that he wished that he had been on that boat himself, that he could have saved his daughters and died himself. Or, you know, like there's so many things that, you know, you, as you deal with life, find abominable and not worth living sometimes. And yet God goes, I am offering you peace that passes all understanding. And this is why this song has stood the test of time because not only did Horatio Spafford, excuse me, feel that as he's going over the accident site, but I can say I have felt it. Not all the time, 
there are, you know, there are times where that depth of despair can seem overwhelming, but if you cling to God and cling to the promise that he is going to give you peace that passes all understanding, then you can understand it is well, it is well with my soul. I hope that this has been an encouragement to you as it has encouraged my heart over many, many times, over many experiences. And I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Thank you for the suggestion, dear viewer, and we will talk to you next time. Bye.